Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about a small coding adventure of mine using some fancy eye power tech. And if you enjoy my content, may you consider subscribing and liking to help me make more videos just like this one. My goal was to convert a PDF into an audiobook, like they showed off in a video Google made a while ago. But the problem with that was that it wasn't really free because they used the Vision API and some more things. First of all, converting a PDF into an audiobook isn't really that hard. I tested on some different Python modules and landed and stayed with PDF Plumber. And I got the plain text from the PDF by just using the PDF Plumber methods. I then used some IBM text to speech to convert it into an MP3. They use a REST API you can call and then you retrieve the bytes from that and you can write those bytes to an MP3 file in Python. But this technique is not perfect at all, because I will show you right now, if we run this, you will be able to see that in the PDF file, it will just get everything. You can see that there is an address up here with a date and a time. Then there is the title, that, that's the title, and then are, there are some strange numbers, some more numbers, there are four authors, and if we would read that out loud by the AI, it wouldn't really sound great. You have all of those reference numbers right here, um, and then also some the license down there, but you don't really want to hear that, don't you? So what I did was I searched for an AI that would filter out the important parts of a PDF, and preferably a research paper. And yes, we do have some options. Most of them uh, are forks of LAPDF text, which is just layout aware PDF extraction, but they all depend on those weird Java versions, really old Java versions and oddly specific Maven versions, which isn't really great. But what was the case most of the time was that Maven couldn't even download the dependencies because the repos were offline. You can also see on their GitHub repositories that those repositories are really old. And I was really close to giving up at that point, but then I found Grobit. Sorry if I'm butchering that name. And Grobit is a machine learning library for converting raw data, like PDFs, into XML files. Special XML files to be precise, because they use the TEI format. And this is just a way to encode machine readable text while maintaining things like paragraphs, heading, etc. And basically the main features are that we can extract headers, we can extract references, which is great because we don't get those reference um, numbers anymore. It can recognize citations in text, and it can parse names, etc, etc. There is just way more. And also an important part is that it can extract full text and also structure that, so we can structure by paragraphs. And also, this is a pretty up-to-date project with commits just a few days ago. When run, Grobit offers a REST API and also some clients to interact with that REST, REST API in different programming languages like Python. Um, so we don't have to code that ourselves. But to understand it, I just set it up in a VM and played around with the web interface they offer. And this is the project once you download it. They offer some steps for you, how you compile it, etc. And then you can just run it with Gradlu. Run. This will also take some time to spin it up. But once it's started, it will offer a web page on port 8070 on your localhost. Okay, so this is the web page. You will find it on the localhost 8070 once you start it, grow it. And then you have some different tabs up here. And I like to use this TI tab to get the TI XML file because this one, this will be the one we will get with the Python library later on. And then we can just try to different services. And I will just right away use this process full text document. Click on that. We'll get some options. I will just let this uh, be as, as is and click on select file and with the python client i will show off in a bit you will get a sample pdf file which i will just use to demonstrate this right now click on submit and then we get this xml file back you can see that it's nicely structured with the title on top this is the pdf file and you can see this is the title which it nicely extracted into this and you can see that on top here are the authors in this bibble struct thing and for example, this would have been all read out by just, just simply drilling out the PDF file, which of course we don't want to. And then you can see that it just simply reads out the different paragraphs 
right here. This isn't really the right thing, but here we go. Um, it lists out the head, uh, which is this one right here. Um, then we have it also nicely separated this abstract thing here from here. So it noticed that this is kind of a box which is separated and doesn't really conclude to the main text. But then we can see that it nicely extracted this heading right here, a subheading. Then it has the paragraph, which is functional electrical simulation. Fez, and it's just the same here. It leaves out this copyright notice right here. And then it also recognizes all of those references in the square brackets. And we can later on delete this in Python. And as I mentioned, there is also this client for Python. They offer a link on their GitHub as well. You can just click on that and they take you to a different GitHub repository. And this is just a Python module you can install and use. There are also some tests and you can also just use the command line option right here. But they also offer a script solution right here. But with the help of that Python module, I coded myself a little script called it PDF to text, which is not entirely right because it should be called PDF to audio, I just noticed. Anyway, um, it will generate the XML file from a PDF file and then generate the audio from it. And I will just quickly go through this because there are some interesting quirks, which I'd like to show you. First of all, I comment out this, pi this part where I generate the XML file because I like to just generate this XML file at once at the moment and later on you may be able to just use this Python script to pass in a PDF file and then get the audio out. But at the moment you just give it an XML file in this file path variable up here. It will read that content and give it to beautiful soup, which is the XML parser of my choice. Um, I've tried multiple solutions here like mini DOM and other things, but again, those re didn't really suit my needs and there are some handy methods in beautiful soup I used here. Then I extracted out the title with PS content on find because I knew that in the XML file there is only one title attribute. I then also got all diffs in the in the soup basically in the XML file I wanted to say. Um, because all paragraphs, all every text is split up into different diffs. Let me let me show you the XML. This is the XML file of the PDF file I showed you in a bit earlier. And this in VS Code, it's a bit differently formatted. And then you can see that there is the text right here with the backgrounds, etc., is split into different div parts. And with this select div, I just used to select all of those divs. Then I checked if the if the divs do have an attribute called type, because there are some divs, for example, this div with type acknowledgement isn't really relevant for me, or this div type with NX, again, isn't relevant for me. So I just deselected those and didn't use them. And so we have this text array with basically all the divs, which include relevant text for us. The next part was a part I struggled with for a long time. I don't even know why, but I iterated through that text array with the divs in it and basically just went to each div and threw out the not important parts. I just deleted every ref tag, little every list bibble tag, every formula tag, and every label tag. Because you can see that there are some formula tags here, for example, which these text-to-speech algorithm probably wouldn't be able to pronounce correctly. And also this thing, for example, with reference here. I don't need that with figure six, or this up there with the reference up here, just this one. I wanted to put that out, so I just used this method here at s.select and then s.extract to just delete all of those tags. Then I created an extracted text variable and put the title in front and appended a dot so the text-to-speech algorithm would pause after the title. And then I would iterate through each of the divs. This part may be a bit con uh, confusing at first, but it was the only option for me to insert proper dots after each paragraph. The problem I had that if I would just call dot text, which is the method in beautiful soup to extract text, if I would just call that on the div container, it would just use the background without a space or a dot and just put the functional, this paragraph just right behind it. I would need to insert a dot right here. So basically what I'm doing is um, I'm iterating through this div container and getting each element putting a dot and a space there, and then putting the next element behind that. And that's basically all I'm doing in this 
two in those two for loops. And also there is the case where it's not a tag element, but just a text element. For example, in this case, this is just a text element, this head thing. And in this case, I don't need to call that dot text method because it's already a string. Then apparently the parser has some problems, LXML is the parser I used, um, has some problems with placing correct dots and commas. So there was the case where I just put a space and then a dot, but I wanted a dot and then a space like every normal human being does. Um, so it would just replace those. And yeah, this is just the part of um, the text-to-speech part, which is just entirely copied from their documentation. And I use this credentials.py for the authentication token because I don't want you to see that. And the only part that is really a problem right now is that we can only do five kilobyte requests at once to the API by IBM. So what I use is text wrap and I just shorten it at 4,999 characters. I could also do 5,000 characters if I'm not wrong because 5,000 characters are five kilobytes, but I just want to do be sure. And basically I just shorten this. Um, this is one of the next steps I have to do is I have to get around this 5,000 character limit by making multiple requests and then stitching together these audio files. And I will now show you some results I got and I will just have you take a listen and have a look at the PDF files while we hear that. A survey on the explainability of supervised machine learning. Introduction. The accuracy of current artificial intelligence AI, models is remarkable, but accuracy is not the only aspect that is of utmost importance. For sensitive domains, a detailed understanding of the model and the outputs is important as well. The underlying machine learning and deep learning algorithms construct complex models that are opaque for humans. State that the medical domain is among the greatest challenges for AI. For areas such as healthcare, where a deep understanding of the AI application is crucial, the need for explainable artificial intelligence Zai, is obvious. Multi-contact functional electrical stimulation for hand opening, electrophysiologically driven identification of the optimal stimulation site. Background. Functional electrical stimulation, FES, is a widely used technique for inducing muscle contraction. FES induces muscle activation through the application of currents that are able to excite the axons of the motor neurons innervating the target muscles. This technique has been extensively studied for both training and rehabilitation purposes. I think this already sounds pretty good. The only problem we have right now is that the AI still does mistakes sometimes. Like marking name as references and we just remove them. For example, normally in this sentence there would be a name in front with a date I think behind and because of that date the AI thought that the name was a reference as well and just then remove that. And of course this sentence is not that great right now. Also right here you can see that it's just or according to and then there is no name but normally there would be a name. Well, but that's basically it I have for you today. Um, the next step for me will be to make this into a Google Colab notebook session just for easier setup and just some easier sharing. And I hope you enjoyed this little proof of concept and till then, see you next time.